That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which Netflix is releasing uh, theatrically November 25th, 2020, before it will be available on the streaming platform uh, December 18th, 2020. Who directed this? George C. Wolfe. What has George done? Uh, well, George is also a prolific character actor, but he oh. uh, directed Lackawanna Blues back in 2005, which um, uh, also was scripted by Ruben Santiago Hudson, uh, who, uh, of course, this film is an adaptation of the August Wilson play, uh, but Lackawanna Blues, uh, notably uh, starring S. Epatha Murkison, uh, also was a blues-infused film. He did Nights in Rodanthe with uh, Diane Lane and Richard Gere, which I never saw. He did uh, You're Not You, a movie about ALS with Hilary Swank and Loretta Devine. And oh. then, of course, uh, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which was a television film with Oprah. That's right. Oh. Well, good work, sir. Mm -hmm. This film is about, well, it's set in the 1920s. Well, it opens in 1927, Burnsville, Georgia, and that's where we get to, we were introduced uh, to Ma Rainey singing who was a, a real-life uh, blues singer. She was the mother of blues. And if you saw Bessie, the film with Queen Latifah... Queen Latifah is playing Bessie Smith, who was the protege slash lover of uh, Ma Rainey, who kind of learned her craft. And Bessie was known as the Empress of Blues. And in Bessie, Ma Rainey was played by Monique. That's correct. All right. So this film set in the late 20s, 1920s, we find four musicians mm -hmm. rehearsing in preparation for a record recording. Mm -hmm. in, in Chicago. In Chicago. They're waiting for the singer to arrive, and the singer is Ma Rainey, played by Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. So the story is kind of like the parallel between these two, the musicians and Ma Rainey. Mm -hmm. So the story with the musicians is there's contention in the group because there is a newer, younger guy named Levy, mm -hmm. played by... Chadwick Boseman. In his final on-screen appearance. Who is the young, fresh guy. He has come up with, essentially, is a remix to Ma's big song, Black, Black Bottom. Bottom. Uh, which I looked up is a reference to uh, Area of Detroit. Oh. And uh, is also a reference to the Black Bottom Stomp. Okay. So, everyone's excited about the remix, except Cutler, who's played by Coleman Domingo. Correct. Cutler's sort of worked with Ma the longest yeah. or a long time and he knows she's not going to like that she's going to want to do the song the way she does it so that's the initial conflict we see within that group the other two band members are played by glenn turman mm -hmm. and michael potts who uh glenn turman is toledo and slow drag is michael potts ma shows up late mm -hmm. in part due to a car accident mm -hmm. a minor car accident when she shows up, it's very clear that Ma uh, does things her way. She, her manager, a white man, and the record executive, also a white man, her, well, her manager is very attentive to her. Irvin. And Irvin, who, his main role is to really get her to work. Yes. So he's doing everything he can to keep her happy so she will continue to work. Ma knows this. Um, so she is taking full advantage, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But... While they're sitting talking, well, first she springs a surprise on him. She has brought along, in addition to her young, beautiful girlfriend, she's brought her nephew. Mm -hmm. Her nephew has a stuttering problem, mm -hmm. and she wants him to do the intro dialogue to her record that's being recorded. As so, a, and, uh, a, and as a paid gig. And as a paid gig. So obviously that's a problem that they have to work out. But while they're talking, Ma hears the remix to her song and is immediately... Uh, put off because she wants to sing the song the original way. Mm -hmm. So there's some conflict that goes back and forth. Ultimately, the record is successfully recorded. Yeah. Just to wrap up this basic story, the record successfully recorded. There's an issue with her pay, but because Ma knows how to play the game, she never signed the release forms. Mm -hmm. So she knows they won't uh, mess with her money until she starts to release forms. So ultimately she gets what she she came for and leaves. However, Levy, Chadwick Boseman's character, he had sort of had a side situation with the record executive and had submitted songs he had written to this executive and was told like, I love them, you can record them. But once they're done recording Ma, 
the record executive basically plays him and says like, yeah, your music's not really what people are looking for. I'll do you a favor and pay, do you a favor and pay this little bit of money. And if you want to keep writing, I'll keep taking these songs just to do you a favor. But clearly the record executive is taking this fresh sound from this young black man and passing it off to white artists. That's devastating to Levy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, and also right before that, he was fired by Ma Rainey. Ma Rainey also fired Levy, so he's having a very bad day. Mm -hmm. When he returns to the rehearsal room, basically, with the other musicians, he finds Glenn Turman's character, and Glenn Turman's character accidentally steps on his shoes, which is a plot point that we have visited previously because Levy's character was late to the rehearsal because he had purchased these shoes on credit. They're very expensive. Well, he had... Or he spent money he didn't have yet. Yeah, basically part of that money he owed Coleman the Bingo's character. So, and a character steps on his shoes then. But at the end, Glenn Turman's character, Toledo, steps on his shoes and Levy snaps and stabs Toledo, mm -hmm. presumably killing him. The end. Well, the final scene of the film is this white singer with a white band singing one of Levy songs. Yeah, we kind of see the, to nail the uh, the uh, historical nail uh, the coffin <laughs> <laughs> of uh, the trajectory of what has happened uh, systematically to uh, black artists, especially yeah. well in every industry, but uh, it's very pervasive, of course, in the music industry. This film was very well done. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple story that I think speaks volumes. Well, should we first mention that you have an August Wilson story from your youth? Okay, so <laughs> in AP English, um, we all, all students had to select a writer to basically like research for the entire year and present like a thesis at the end. Mm -hmm. So I chose August Wilson. And I'm not the most literate person, so reading was never like fun for me. But that experience in the 12th grade, <laughs> reading um, most of August Wilson's work, seeing several stage productions and actually getting to meet him because this is 1996 uh was a very nice experience mm -hmm. i um, can imagine yeah yeah anyway this is part this was uh first published in 1982 as part of his pittsburgh cycle um it this it was produced by denzel washington who of course directed the first theatrical uh feature based on an august wilson play which was fences in 2016 which he won his first uh, Pulitzer Prize for. Um, I liked this better than Fences. Which, now I'm bummed I didn't watch, I haven't watched Fences yet. Well, you should. Viola is, Sh uh, yes, Viola is excellent in that and she should have been in the best actress category because she's on equal footing with Denzel in that. Um, well, she acts her ass off in this one. This is uh, kind of transformative for Viola Davis. Uh, you could saying she's transfixing, which is, I wholly agree with. Um, but also, I'm not used to seeing her this way. Well, I think that's what, Obviously. kind of what's so fun. Yeah, but oh gosh, she's so good. I mean, the performance, but also I think the makeup, the styling, because she's made to seem heavier than she actually is. Mm -hmm. And I think the like art department did a great job achieving that. Mm -hmm. Her, She's also, her makeup, and she's the only one who looks like this, is done so she looks like there's perspiration, her, Makeup is kind of garish. Yeah. Like the rouge, the eyeshadow, it's a, it's too much. Also, as is appropriate for that time period, her eyebrows have been shaved off oh, yeah, those, and painted back on. Those Jean Harlow pencil brows. And yeah. it works so well. She also has gold teeth but oh. uh, yeah, it, it works so well. She looks and just like her sitting there and like oh, yeah. glaring at characters and the like physicality. you can see the, like the breath she's taking in her decolletage and mm -hmm. it's, it's very effective well every every look every glance is you know withering uh -huh. to say the least but uh just her brow beat, even from the very uh beginning where she speaks is when she has an altercation with this white police officer and she yes. steps up on that man yeah. um and he backs down <laughs> <laughs> it it's impressive but not in a way that also overwhelms everybody else because this really is an ensemble oh yes like, um uh, but there, there's equal uh, space for everybody else i think in this as well well i i my biggest or overall critique of this film is i think this is a really good example of you use this phrase when all actors are 
firing on all pistons? It's when everybody's like kind of firing on all cylinders. All cylinders, sorry. Uh, like, like from Anne Roth's um, costume design to Bramford Marsalis in the score, uh, the cinematography from Tobias A. Sch Schleisler, the, it's a German man who's also lensed uh, A Wrinkle in Time for Ava DuVernay and Dreamgirls. Um, but all of the performances are strong. Oh yeah. And everything works so smoothly. Uh, even people that you'd think would be in kind of throwaway roles like Taylor Page as uh, Dusty May, her lover. She's, she really only has two significant speaking moments. And one is in the beginning where we understand the, the relationship. And then when uh, Chadwick Boseman seduces her. Uh, and then he has a line that's, can I introduce my red rooster to your brown hen? Oh my <laughs> God, that was so good. Cause I had to stop and like, did he really just say that? Yeah, but even her performance. That's such a good line. Her reactions to him, I, I loved. Uh, Coleman Domingo, uh, who gets I, I, to be part of, I think the most poignant scene uh, with the argument about religion, um, which causes kind of the second Mo it, it sets up the second monologue for Chadwick Boseman's Levy, uh, which I thought was excellent and reminded me kind of of a, he has a freak out in uh, Spike Lee's Red Hook Summer as well. Um, and just their whole bickering back and forth mm -hmm. is good. Um, Glenn Turman and Michael Potts are used a, a, to a, a little bit of a lesser degree, uh, but I always like seeing Glenn Turman, who looks, as you'd comment, looks the same. As I as only as have three notes, and one of them is Glenn Turman is going to live forever, and he looks so good. I would be so lucky. <laughs> You've never seen my favorite black exploitation film with him, which is JD's Revenge, oh. or Cooley High, which mm. that's not black exploitation, but um, which we own. Those are both excellent films. Um, I know him from a different world. Well, yeah, of course, but like when he was very young. Yes, I know him. Um, I, just the themes, and it also reminded me uh, a little bit of Lorraine Hansberry's Raisin in the Sun, to the effect that it seems still ahead of its time in dealing with um, uh, religion in the black community and the effects, kind of, kind of the trauma that centers around it for uh, some, and how it doesn't flinch away from presenting that. Well, two of my favorite scenes were, you know, getting Ma to the recording uh, studio getting her like to agree on like what she's going to do is quite an undertaking and when she's finally ready to record she asks for her coca-cola mm -hmm. and they don't have her coca-cola and she goes off and i thought that was such a good scene uh yes it is a good scene yeah. well and also when she finally gets it in her guzzling it yeah um, oh yeah she's just sucking on it like a titty uh, <laughs> <laughs> so good and she <laughs> like all her little rants could be because while, when she sends her nephew and who goes with Michael Potts to get the Coca-Cola and then it, it's one of the um, few scenes where we get our outset of this uh, claustrophobic environment which I thought the film opens up really nice it I rarely thought that this felt like a film play um, and was used wisely to show that Polish bakery and the white clientele and kind of the snake pit just going out in Chicago to buy Coca-Cola would they face, um, but just her like the things she says. All her dialogue is great. Like bitching about how you know I'm their money maker and they can't even give me a Coke. Um, My second favorite scene is Chadwick Boseman's character Levy relays a story about how his mother was raped by a group of white men, mm -hmm. and he uses that. He pivots off of that to talk about basically how God hates black people. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very powerful. Yeah. It's, it's that, like, that's a very good scene. It's excellent, yeah. I don't have anything else ex like to say except, like, you know, it's on Netflix. It's easy to watch. Everyone should watch it. Eventually. I looked at the lyrics to Black Bottom. Okay. Because it wasn't a track I was familiar with. But it's very much, to me, like uh, Khaleesi's Milkshake. Oh, okay. Wise. But there, I had to write down what the lyrics was. All the boys in the neighborhood, they say your bottom's really good. <laughs> Um, I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, uh, also, uh, wh where it end, that moment it ends on uh, reminded me of an Alice Walker story um, that it doesn't come out and say it, but it's basically about uh, how Elvis Presley got his start, of course, was uh, taking music from uncredited black folks. Uh, I think Hound Dog. But uh, that was in my mind in these final, in the final closing moments as well, which... I thought were very profound. I, I thought this film was very moving. Um, not to uh, cut down anything about Denzel Washington's Fences, I just thought that that film felt very much like a film directed by an actor uh, and focusing primarily on, 
you know, there's a lot of heavy monologues in that film, in that play. And this felt a, a bit more seamless, a bit more uh, transportive. Yes. I well, know. I haven't seen Fences, so I can't say that. No, and it's, I don't know. It, I think it'd be great if uh, Viola Davis won a second Oscar uh, for another August Wilson production. Um, hey, give her another trophy. I don't know, because she was, uh, I don't know, uh, I was uh, highly impressed. And from somebody that I have high expectations of anyway, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then of course, Bozeman. Do you have anything for his final, which is dedicated to him, of course? He does a fine job. Again, I just think like, maybe like, you know, like fine acting is something that we should be expecting. And I think of course. that we don't, like, I, I know for myself, just watching so many films that are subpar, I think, it, like, the standard has been lowered. And watching this film, like, reminded me that we should expect more because we can get it. Mm -hmm. And I guess you just have to have to hire the same, you know, five black people to be in your movie that I guess, but like... Well, there's a learning curve as well. Uh, you know, people cut, or sh people should have the ability to cut their teeth. Oh, but, for sure. Um, but I'm just saying like this, this was quality acting. I think Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman gave a very good performance. Um, yeah, I agree. And I'm, and I'm sure he'll get some rec like posthumous recognition. Right, and I, I, I think also to be clear um, on critiquing black, like not being as harsh on, you know, black films or black cinema. Well, that's what I was talking about, like not being good. I was just right, saying in right. general, like a lot of these films we watch from all types of filmmakers are crappy. That's, so that's true. it's just like, you know, it's very refreshing to see a group of actors Filmmakers in general, the cinematographers, the makeup artists, everyone just really on their job and expecting a lot from themselves. That's what this film felt like. Oh, yeah. I think like, I, like everyone who was a part of it expected a certain level of quality. I, yeah, and I think it really showed. I think I wrote down also in here that it felt like a nice bourbon on the rocks. It's just... I don't know, bourbon. A nice buzz. Um, what would you give this film? Four out of five. I would give it four out of five as well. I also feel like I have to mention my shirt because I want to post a picture of where this image came from. Okay, sure. Yeah, right. Are you going to do the same for me? That's from Alien 3? Yes. Okay, yes, well, yes. we'll do the same for you. All right, <laughs> no, bye. Bye.